should we do mono repo? That's a good question. And let the holy wars begin. What the the biggest pain I see, and you know, I've been indoctrinated in kind of like uh, the model that HashiCorp has created with the uh, very much a poly repo uh, forward approach yeah. with modules being in each repo, versioned separately, released yeah. separately, pull request history separate. Uh, works pretty well. Um, and, and the challenge is when you go with this mono repo approach, like look at the companies doing it, for example, like a, a Google doing it, how, I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of what they do is all original, all in house. And yeah, I get it. But when you're trying to integrate then with a lot of third party open source, your real option is only doing vendoring. Um, and vendoring is something that is well understood in certain languages or frameworks, but as a generic pattern across tool sets, vendoring isn't universally like just documented how to do it. Uh, we're working on something at Cloud Posse right now. It's actually going to be part of our reference architecture and how to do some vendoring. But um, I'm, you know, it's. It's a challenge. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm normal, right? I'm not seeing anything abnormal. The problem which world is facing, I'm facing the same. And I need to try to dive through that, I guess. Yeah. It, and it's offloading a lot of, yeah. It, it offloads a lot of that complexity onto the tool chain. Uh, and like if you're, if you're using Basil, for example, they have a lot of things to uh, optimize uh, the mono repo build architecture, but then they've created their own build system uh, around that. And then when you want to integrate that into maybe if you're using a traditional build tool system like uh, Codefresh, Circle, or GitHub Actions, um, you know, it's not doing that much in the end if you're going to mm -hmm. use the build server architecture for Basil, perhaps. Now, I'm not an expert at that stuff at all, uh, so I, I'm I'm far out on a limb talking about that. Uh, talking about how to build, deploy, release uh, uh, polyrepo architectures is definitely in our wheelhouse and what we specialize on most of the time. One thing on that, Eric, I mean, you guys have decided that your root modules for Terraform, though, are mono repo, correct? Like yeah, use... so, yeah, you know, the, the, so uh, one thing that I really like on um, uh, HashiCorp side, what they've kind of gone, so, I, I think there's there's uh, I, I, I I'm I'm leaning more towards conceptually a model where you have poly mono repos, um, if that makes sense. So you logically collect uh, things or services together in a repo, uh, but there it's actually a collection of uh, smaller projects in there. Um, it works well in certain cases where you also have extreme proliferation, like so we have our cloud posse packages repo. I would have hated to create a repo for each package we want to redistribute. So in this case, you know, here are all these packages that we redistribute in, in uh, Alpine or Debian or uh, soon to be RPM format. And we took a, a mono repo build approach for this. So if you look in our workflows, we generate a workflow for each one of those mono repos. Um, now, I have, I, I'm not, this, there, there are these things that, the tools you choose to use for this are also opinionated and some uh, and, and how well they will work with a mono repo versus a poly rep like poly or individual small repos, your mileage may vary. Uh, I took this approach because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to offload the challenge of knowing what files changed to GitHub. I didn't want to have to calculate that myself, but then that meant that I had to have lots of workflows for each individual service. This is an easy example though. What if, Gauntlet was depending on another uh, service in the same repo and that changes and this has to change. I guess it's still achievable in some way, but I'm not solving it here because it's a e e much easier case. So yeah, you, you brought up uh, this example, um, Matt, which is our Terraform root modules. And uh, this was our first foray into kind of doing some level of mono repo with Terraform. And 
Uh, these are largely out of date and this is not what we're using uh, for more than a year at this point. That's why you see a lot of stuff is out of date. The stuff that's been updated is like maintenance work for existing customers. The approach we're going is with our reference architecture that is uh, perpetually in progress now. Um, the reference architecture here, it, we'll, we'll talk more about it once there's more here, but literally this morning I tasked more work related to this. Uh, where we are headed with this is with a, a hybrid approach of vendoring uh, for root modules and projects. So projects is uh, each Terraform project goes in here. So you have like a VPC project, an IAM project, a DNS project, a uh, a EKS project, a RDS project, etc., etc., etc. So those are your root modules, but how you invoke them, the configuration of those is yet a separate layer of abstraction. And this is a lot too much hand wavy, and I don't want to get into this until we, I can actually point you guys to some exact examples, and we'll have something for that in uh, a month or two. So Terraform monorepos, yes, uh, or or poly monorepos. So one thing I, I noticed, you know, I, the challenge that I faced is, you know, when it, it, it's easy when you're using modules at the root of your Terraform code, but it becomes really a challenge when you're using modules inside modules. Uh, it's hard to maintain. You can't uh, do vendoring from a security perspective, but you can yeah. still do vendoring of the top level module that you're including. Yeah. 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 No, that that is this is a gnarly problem. I thought, oh, this is going to be easy, and it wasn't. So, yeah. uh, so you know, we we de we develop a lot of modules, of course, and we develop a lot of composable modules, smaller modules, narrow in scope. Uh, one one d does one thing well, and then we compose them. Uh, so that comp that that composed module, um, sometimes that's a root module, sometimes it's just another module. Uh, so an example of that would be like our EC our our web app uh, module is a pretty opinionated uh, way of deploying an ECS task. And if you look at this one, it's really a showcase for how to tie all the other modules we provide together into one module that does a heck of a lot and in inherits all the functionality of all the other modules without having to stick all of that into one massive module with a massive surface area. The problem is yeah. if you wanted to vendor this module, you're not going to be able to vendor all these sub modules yeah. very easily because they're versioned. And the other thing is you might be referencing other modules or the same module multiple times at different versions. So when you do yeah. vendoring it has to take that into account as well. And yeah, we, yeah. we, uh, we cut bait on that and the vendoring I'm talking about now that we're working on is just vendoring the, uh, the, the, first layer of the module. Yeah. yeah. So I, in, I inherited it. I inherited it uh, at a project that I'm doing. Mm. And it, it, it becomes a really challenge, you know, because, you know, it's all into one place and then modules are also there. Modules refer to it themselves. And then I need to do a, a forecast, right? That, you know, this is going to be worse than when I'll be releasing it. Yeah. And then I try to do a future with a PR and then as I need to do release as soon as possible, right? Because it's going to break the thing. So yeah. yeah, it becomes really hard to maintain when you are using this kind of uh, setup. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, it's not a solved problem yet. Uh, I think what happens is individually organizational co organizations come up with a workflow process that works for them, yeah. but it doesn't always yeah. translate. Yeah. So I always, you know, I always, uh, whenever, you know, I see someone going into that direction, I just stop them right there and then try to convince them, okay, let's go with, you know, a single, you know, we are not doing an inheritance, like no modules inside modules, put that together. Mm -hmm. And then, and I read it somewhere on the Terraform talks as well. So they are also recommending it. Mm -hmm. Very cool.